Last week, we learned that Fox News would rather lie to their viewers than tell them the truth and risk people turning the channel. That truth was that the, the truth, that truth was that the 2020 election, according to Trump's own administration, was one of the most secure elections in American history. And that Donald Trump lost to Joe Biden by more than 7 million votes. Yesterday, thanks to the newly elected Democratic Attorney General of Arizona, Chris Mays, we learned that her predecessor, Mark Burnovich, knew months ago that there was virtually zero fraud. But he withheld that evidence from the public. Nearly a year after the election, Burnovich launched an investigation that lasted 10,000 hours with more than 400 claims investigated. Separate investigations tasked with looking into those claims produced a report in March of last year and stated in black and white that virtually all claims of error and malfeasance, malfeasance were unfounded. A month later, Burnovich issued an interim report that ignored those findings and claimed serious vulnerabilities. He left out edits from his own investigators, refuting his assertions. His decision to lie to the public was likely motivated by the fact that he was running in a MAGA-filled primary for Arizona's Senate seat. His decision helped make Arizona ground zero of election denialism to this day. This is just a taste of what Republican voters in Arizona told Frank Luntz during a focused group just last week. Why are we using the same system that they used in Venezuela? If any of these systems are Democrat-owned, how can we trust the checks and balances of, of, of these votes? It doesn't matter where the vote comes from, whether it's a Dominion voting machine or a mail-in ballot. How can we trust that if George Soros owns over 40 percent of these machines? We just don't trust. And because of that trust, mm -hmm. we don't believe the truth that's being told to us. Okay, no, nothing they just said is true, but this, this is the more dangerous, by the way, consequence of lying to people. Take a look. Get that You see, lies don't exist in a vacuum. They fuel suspicion that leads to death, destruction, and the most serious threat to American democracy in modern history. Very few Republican politicians or Fox pundits are held accountable for those lies. Those who assaulted the Capitol are being held accountable. Roughly a thousand of them who were convinced to believe the big lie have been prosecuted, including Enrique Tarrio, the leader of the right-wing militia group, the Proud Boys. Tario is charged with having directed, mobilized, and led a crowd of 200 supporters onto the Capitol grounds. On Wednesday, Jeremy Bertino, the only member of that group to plead guilty to seditious conspiracy, testified that the members of the Proud Boys believed that they had to take the reins and lead an all-out revolution to keep Trump in office. In discussing how they would accomplish that, Bertino explained that they needed to get Pelosi because she was the talking head of the opposition and they needed to remove her from power. Bertino added, quote, we were always talking about being the tip of the spear and that was just another example of us leading the way and leading by example. I'm joined now by Stuart Stevens, senior advisor to the Lincoln Project and chief strategist for Mitt Romney's 2012 campaign. And Stuart, I mean, we've been down this road before, but the people on, in the Republican base were receiving the same lie from so many different sources. It was their elected officials, like this official in Arizona, who's their top law enforcement guy. He's supposed to be telling them the truth, but he was lying to them to help himself win, win a primary, which he lost. And now let's look at what they were hearing, likely, from their favorite news channel, Fox News. As we await today's Electoral College decision, an Intel source telling me that President Trump did, in fact, win the election. Interesting stories about dead people voting. Wow, amazing. Uh, what free and fair elections we all have confidence in. I saw that interview with Sidney Powell and Maria uh, on Sunday. She sounded convincing. We need to find out exactly what happened in this election. You know, and I'm not, no, not giving any excuses to the people who stormed the Capitol, but every source of information available to them was telling the same lie. It's not shocking at all that they believed that they needed to do something, I guess, to keep Trump in office forever. You know, um, I, I don't think we talk enough about the uh, blame that is within what passes for the establishment of the Republican Party. 
Every United States senator who's Republican knew within 48 hours, without a doubt, that Donald Trump had lost that election. All they had to do was get their comm shot to put out a statement congratulating the president of elect That's of the it. country that they live in, they're serving in the United States Senate or in Congress. I mean, on the level of a sacrifice for democracy compared to, say, the greatest generation, which is what they inherited, it's a pretty low bar. But they went along with it. And I, I really think that was a, a check. I mean, in our system, parties should be a circuit breaker to stop craziness. And the greatest failure of the Republican Party in this whole Trump era has been not to be that circuit breaker. And the reason they're not doing it is because they want power. And they care more about power than they care about the country. And that continues. I think about Arizona, which really became ground zero. I mean, they hired these strange organizations to come and audit these wild. I mean, but they were being told if you lived in Arizona, you're a Republican. You are hearing from the government. You're the Republican government is saying, yeah, there's something wrong with this election. And then you turn on Fox News and they're saying this election was stolen. Trump is saying it was stolen. Everyone that you in your bubble trust is saying this was a fraud of, you know, historic proportions. Now, you tell some Democrats that, let's just be clear, they ain't storming the Capitol, okay? The Republicans are different. And this is what a lot of them did. Do you think that there should be more subpoenas of people like this supposed, you know, government official in Arizona in these trials? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. I mean, the guy was using government money to do an investigation, and then he covered up the investigation results because he didn't like it, and he thought it might help him in a primary. Um, I mean, I'd make a good case for that being misuse of government funds, for sure. Um, look, I think what has been difficult to grasp is how deep this goes in the Republican Party. I mean, it's like January 6th. I mean, it was always clear to a lot of us who worked in the party, but it's now it's been sort of explicated that this was something that involved every layer of the Republican Party, from the White House to the RNC to the Attorney General's Association, the people who were supposed to be, you know, the upholders of the law, to big donors, um, to senators and their staff. And where are we today? I mean, yeah. Majority of the Republican Party does not believe that Joe Biden is a legally elected yeah. president. It, you, and you, and I, mean, I think the consequences of that are just profound.